some new names and some new nationalities are hitting high fashion catwalks. Designers from Central Europe are muscling in, aiming for a slice of the global luxury market. Hungary's Nanushka is one. Once a struggling local brand, its revenues have grown 33-fold since it got private equity backing in 2016. Now it counts Billie Eilish and Justin Bieber among fans. Boss Peter Baldashti says technology has made growth possible. We can't deny the fact that social media was a key enabler, and not just for Hungarian brands, but from, for brands from other smaller countries to achieve a global presence in, in, in the fashion industry. Um, without social media, probably you know, 15, 20 years ago, it would have been almost impossible to build a global fashion house from Budapest. It's not just Hungary. Slovakia-based Nahera is worn by Hollywood stars like Kira Knightley and Tilda Swinton. Products from Poland's Magda Butrim are sported by Megan Fox and Hayley Bieber. Besides social media, they're helped by Central Europe's long tradition of craftsmanship in textiles. After the fall of communism in 1989, many Western brands set up shop there to take advantage of lower costs and skilled workers. Now homegrown brands want their share of a global luxury goods market forecast to hit $383 billion in 2025. Peter Baldashti again. We all know that yeah, undeniably the future of luxury lies in China and, uh, and there are uh, tremendous opportunities which uh, we are also working on to explore. For now, global groups like LVMH still dominate the luxury market. But industry experts say high-end shoppers are always looking for new names and new ideas. Central Europe's budding luxury brands aim to seize the chance. Ericsson's third quarter earnings beat expectations on Tuesday. Operating earnings rose to just over $1 billion, slightly up from a year ago. The Swedish tech firm said Tuesday that strong sales of 5G equipment in most of the world was key. Deals from all three U.S. telecom firms, Verizon, AT&T and T-Mobile, helped absorb losses in China. Ericsson's proportion of revenue from China has dropped heavily, down to 3% from a total of around 10%. Chinese sales fell by $418 million in the third quarter alone. It comes a year after Sweden banned China's Huawei from selling 5G gear in the country. Ericsson has since lost most of its share in the latest rounds of telecom tenders in China. The company also said global supply chain issues had started to bite. It was not able to deliver certain hardware to its customers due to a chip shortage and logistics problems. A mixed performance on Wall Street Monday as optimism ahead of tech earnings battled worries about slower economic growth in China. The Dow fell for the first time in four sessions. The S&P 500 rose just 15 points. The Nasdaq jumped 124. One main ongoing concern for investors, inflation. Investors are waiting for more corporate results to hear how inflation is impacting earnings, says Patrick Fruzetti. He's a managing director for the Rose Advisors at Hightower first half of the year, you know, we heard a lot of management teams talking about the back half of the year and what was going to pressure margins. So not only in certain businesses like industrials do you have commodity margin pressures, you also have labor margin pressures. And I think we're seeing that across the board. And we'll see that spill over to earnings, um, but ultimately guidance for 2022. And I think that's what we'll hear a lot about in this coming uh, week and, and couple of weeks uh, ahead of us. Good morning. Apple was one of the bright spots in company news. The world's most popular gadget maker unveiled new Mac laptops with more powerful computing power and a new model of its popular AirPod at an event on Monday. Shares of Apple rose more than 1%. But shares of Walt Disney held back the Dow. The entertainment conglomerate stock rating was downgraded at Barclays, who is worried about slowing growth at the Disney Plus streaming service. Shares of Disney fell 3%. Netflix, the leading streaming service, rose ahead of its quarterly results due on Tuesday. On the economic front, industrial output fell by the most in seven months since September, following a drop the month before, as the global supply shortage continued to hurt auto manufacturing and crimp the overall economy. 
Good news, though, from the housing sector. Home builder sentiment rose by the most in nearly a year as buyers continue to show up despite a lack of construction supplies and rising interest rates that are driving prices higher. Zillow, however, is having trouble buying and flipping properties, so it's going to pause that business. Shares of the online real estate agent tumbled to a one-year low. Britain's Heathrow Airport is not allowed to raise passenger charges as much as it wanted. That's according to proposals from the UK's aviation regulator Tuesday. Heathrow wanted to raise passenger fees to help offset losses from disruption due to the global health crisis. Its losses topped $4 billion as traffic fell by more than 80%. Now the UK's Civil Aviation Authority says Heathrow can raise its per passenger charge to between about $33 and $47. The airport wanted them to go as high as $60. Though the fees didn't go as far as Heathrow wanted, airlines are still angry. Carriers, including British Airways owner IAG, called the fees disproportionate. It says the London hub is already the world's most expensive. A fresh hike would mean raising ticket prices to cover the charges just when they are trying to get passengers flying again. The new fee proposals will be finalised next year. The UK government has struck a deal with Bill Gates. It says the billionaire Microsoft founder will invest to help bring down the cost of green technologies. Gates says he's looking at what projects to back and won't delay taking action. We'll be funding these projects jointly next year. Uh, uh, the UK's already got a number of applications coming in. We have lots of small companies that are inventing better technology uh, for doing these things. So over the next five year period, we expect at least one of these technologies will be ready to scale and over the next decade that all of them will be. The news came at a global investment summit in London on Tuesday. It's a precursor to the COP26 talks on climate change due to begin at the end of this month. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has a list of technologies he wants Gates to back. That includes better batteries, green hydrogen and systems for capturing carbon emissions. Johnson says private sector backing will be key to making progress worldwide. The developing world has got to be given the, the help it needs to decarbonize. Why should you? We in the UK, uh, we've been pumping this stuff into the air for, for 200 years. Those countries haven't. Uh, and they're going to need help to, to, to reduce their CO2 output. But the only way that that, that, that help can be given in the, in the volume required is with, with massive private sector investment. The breakthrough energy catalyst run by Gates brings together private investors who want to tackle climate change. Now the new UK partnership will see a total of about $552 million going to green projects. Johnson's government has pledged half that sum, with Gates making up the rest.